Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. I'm gonna to get right to it. I'm gonna bring you a dream that my dad had on October 22nd, 2022. I think you'll find this dream quite compelling in that it is very profound teaching as to what our paths should be when we um, decide to follow Christ. So I hope all is well with you. I. I have a sense at this moment that I need to just pause for just a minute and say, you know, the world feels like it's kind of crazy right now. We are under a nuclear, nu not a nuclear threat, <laughs> and it is higher than it's ever been. Um, I've never seen it like this in the world, and I've been, I'm old enough to have seen some things in this world. I have memories of things, and I've never seen it quite like this, and neither have my parents, um, and they're in their late 70s and early 80s, so they've been around too, never seen it like this, so anyway, I want you to be encouraged that through this dream that my dad had, it will give you some direction on the steps you need to be taking right now with the way the world is currently. So I hope this helps you. I truly do. It helped me when, it just helped me. I think it's from God. You square it with the Holy Spirit yourself. You pray, see what he says. I'm not going to get all the interpretation right on this because there's so much I don't know. But I'm going to share this with you. And together we'll get we'll glean some goodness from it one way or the other. So here we go. October 22nd, 2022. My dad had this dream. He was grown, but he was living at home. And he had just bought a brand new car and had loaned the car to his brother, his little brother, who wanted to go and enroll at a college. He would, my dad would have used another car because he had to go somewhere. Uh, but the other car was in the driveway and the battery was dead. Now, my dad needed to go to this important something, like a meeting or something. Uh, but he didn't have a vehicle. So <clears throat> my dad called his little brother and said, hurry up and finish what you're doing and get home. My dad decided to just go ahead and walk to the meeting that he was supposed to go to. And um, so uh, my dad's brother said he was going to bring a battery home for the car. Now, my dad was walking to go to this meeting and in his right hand he was carrying a black box briefcase the box briefcase that opens up at the top in his left hand and so that was in his right hand in his left hand he was carrying a white plastic bag and he was walking along a paved highway several cars zoomed past him and he wondered if they would give him a ride, but they didn't. So he thought <clears throat> it was feeling kind of dangerous where he was walking. So he knew that he could get on a dirt road up ahead, like a different path. And um, that it would be longer to where he was going, but it would be safer. So he, it turned, uh, the road turned left and he knew he was um, on the right road. Uh, it kind of was a, it was a dirt road, but it was residential in that there were houses on both sides. They were very old, <clears throat> excuse me, and they were abandoned. And my dad thought, wow, this is a rundown area of town uh, I haven't seen. So he got to the last house on the right and someone was living there and he looked down in front of their house and there was a stack of silver coins about five inches high and there were like 10 or 12 rows of them just sitting on top of the ground 
And so my dad uh, opened up the white bag and scooped up the coins and put them in the white bag. The woman, there was a woman in front of the house in the yard and she had a boy with her. And she said, what do you think he's doing? She said that to the little boy. <clears throat> Maybe you should go help him. So the boy came and helped my dad and together they kept finding coins and putting them in the white bag. Uh, he brushed some of the dirt away and he found a silver dollars. Um, and he said, look, he said this to the little boy. He said, look, silver dollars, I have found a treasure. Uh, and the bag was getting heavier. So my dad started walking towards the town and he was they were looking on the ground he and the boy and the ground was getting harder and harder and he saw the edge of a nickel sticking up kind of uh out of the dirt and he told the little boy to get it and the little boy got it and then my dad gave him a silver dollar and the little boy left and my dad thought about the treasure he was like i found a treasure and he realized, I'm just not going to make it to that meeting. So he decided to get home. The bag of treasure was growing. He could tell it was getting heavier with other treasures inside the bag. Even though he didn't know what they were, he could feel it getting heavier. And he got home, <clears throat> and his new car was in the driveway, and his brother was there holding a very small battery. And my dad said, that's, that's small. And my, uh, his brother said, that's all they had. It's a six volt battery. So my dad went inside and he had his, the white bag with him, the white plastic bag. And it had gotten bigger, even bigger and fuller of stuff, of treasure, and not just coins. Uh, there was a woman there kind of in the kitchen and it, he's it's kind of like his mom but it wasn't it was a mature woman was there and my dad told her i need some bowls with water in them uh and she got them and they began to look in the bag of treasures and the first thing they pulled out was a bud vase a milk white solid white and at the top was a little cherub a little angel, a little, a little cherub, just one, not cher cherubim, but one cherub, figurine, and they admired it. Then the second thing my dad pulled out was a carved heavy stone, just smooth, just like a smooth carved round stone. And my dad said, I wonder what this stone is. And the woman took the stone and smelled it and said, that's alabaster. That is precious, precious. So then my dad, um, so we sat it down by the bud base. That's what they did. And then my dad pulled out two more alabaster stones uh, that were round and smooth. And he set them beside the other one. The fourth thing that he pulled out was a small ceramic ceramic glass lady's white shoe, like a dress shoe uh, with, a, with a high heel, and they admired it. It was kind of like the old pin cushions were kind of like that, uh, but it was like a shoe, a dress shoe for a woman, solid white, and then... My dad just pulled out this huge, like it was two feet tall, um, candlestick. And it was pure white. Uh, and just pulled it out. It was just amazing. And it was, it was um, very elaborate. And he sat it down on the counter next to the other things. <clears throat> now, all of it was so pretty. All of the treasure was so pretty. At the bottom of the bag was all the coins we put in um, one of the bowls so that he had found. And so they put them in the bowls filled with water from the sink and stirred the water to clean 
uh, the bowls. Um, uh, then they started to drain the water, and a few of the coins went down the drain. And my dad thought, oh, no, you know, they, they, we, they went down the drain. But when they looked into the drain, there was a drain trap that caught the coins. And my dad felt so happy. And my dad said, the, this, this, these are a treasure. These are a treasure. That's what he said. Someone was there and they said, we have to put these on the buffet. <clears throat> we have to put these, <clears throat> excuse me, on the buffet. So that made my dad nervous because people were coming in to the house and handling the treasures. And my dad said, put them on the table. But a man came in and said, that's not important because we're going to play cards on that table. And that was the end of the dream. So my dad said, put the treasures on like the kitchen table. And the man said, no, that's not important because we're going to play cards on that table. So the treasures were left on the buffet. That's the end of the dream. Now, there's a lot of symbolism and a lot of um, metaphors in that dream. Like one thing symbolizes another thing. I'm just going to give an overarching thought of what these, this dream is about. It is about choices. It is about the treasure of the gospel of Christ. Now then, I want to get to those things that were in the bag. But up until that point, when he was pulling the treasures out, he was having choices that were available to him. The first choice was, does he give his new car to his brother or not? And he felt like that's the right thing to do, to help out your brother, to help your family when they need it. He kind of didn't feel like doing it because it was a new car, but um, he did anyway. And it was the right thing to do. Now, he had that black case and the white bag. I think that must mean... Uh, and I'm open to everyone else's comment on here, so please comment what you think. But I think that means evil and good. Uh, black versus white. Things are clear uh, oftentimes in the body of Christ. We know the difference between good and evil. So he has the black and the white. He's along a highway, and the highway is going very fast, and he feels da it feels dangerous there. There's lots of people there. Uh, people aren't noticing that he needed help. He needed a ride. They didn't give it. He chose to leave the highway, to leave that busyness, and go take another road, even though it was going to be longer. And it was kind of the difference. It, it kind of was more humble. He was around humble surroundings. And there was a sense of humility when he was walking that dirt road. He found the treasure in front of that woman's house. Um, piles of silver coins. And he took that treasure and put it in the white bag. And it was about that time in his dream that the black bag disappeared. I think that means that, um, and then that little boy helped him. And he gave the little boy some of the treasure. Um, choosing to give away what we have, choosing to give the message of Christ to someone, that is the ultimate treasure. And when he did that, the things, when he gave the silver dollar to the, to the boy and the nickel, um, it, the treasures in his bag grew. It got he was blessed with more treasure. Well, um, when he got back home, I now y'all, I do not understand this part of the dream. So you're going to chime in, please, because I'm not sure. But why was his brother standing there with that six-volt battery? That is not a big enough battery. I don't know. I don't know beans about cars, all right? I just get in and turn the key and drive it. But... 
I, I have learned since this dream that a six volt battery is not big enough to run a car. Why was his brother standing there with it? I don't know. I don't know. But um, anyway, he got his new car back, went inside this home. Now these treasures, these treasures, I believe that were in the white bag because he could feel it getting bigger and bigger even though he didn't know what was. And he had this great sense of, I have found treasure. <laughs> and that's amazing because when we have Christ and the more we grow, the more we give to Christ, the more we sacrifice, even though we don't understand it, like he did giving his car to his brother, even though, you know, the more we do that, the more we're blessed, the more the darkness, the black bag disappears, the more we have inside of us and sometimes outside of us, sometimes material things, but mostly the blessings inside of us. So he goes inside and these things he pulls out of this bag, y'all, I was like, man, when he was telling me this, I was, you know, uh, the bud face. Now, I will tell you this. I do not understand why it was a bud vase. Except a bud holds something that is new and it grow, often opens up. The, the cherub is an angel. Uh, I t cherubs, the little I read, they are in the presence of God. They are angels that God created that are meant to minister and, and to carry the message of God. Um, and do the will of God. So, okay, keep that in mind. I think that references, and it's white, I think that references just God's plan overall, his plan. I'm open to y'all's comments, though. Now, the second thing, y'all, the alabaster stone, that woman held it to her nose and smelled it. And it was very, very precious. Do y'all remember the story in the Bible? It's in three of the Gospels about the woman who broke the alabaster jar of perfume and anointed Jesus. And like, you know, the apostles and Judas were like, oh my Lord, that alabaster could have, you know, we could have sold that perfume and made money and given it to the poor. And Jesus says, you will always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. And I think that's that stone represents Christ. She smelled it. It had to smell like that perfume that the woman anointed Jesus. That's Jesus. That stone represents Christ. And his what he did for us on the cross. And the other two alabaster stones represent the Father and the Spirit. That's my thinking. That that's what that means. Now then. The small ceramic lady's shoe, that's white. I think that's the church, the bride of Christ. The feet that go take the good news, that's what I think. And it's precious and white and pure. And then the, the candlestick, the big white candlestick, that's the gospel message that Jesus, that's the light of the world. That's the light to the world is the gospel. And so these treasures that were in there are, are that encompasses everything God set up for us for this moment in time. Even when the world is unraveling, guess what? We can put these treasures on a buffet for people to come by and have and partake of. I love this dream because it teaches me how beautiful and gentle God is when he's teaching us about himself. So, the coins that were in the bottom of the bag, is that the saints? I wonder if all of those coins represent the saints or maybe our blessings. I don't know, but some of them got in the trap of the drain. And my, you know... My dad got them out of that trap and they didn't go down the drain. He didn't lose them. Nearly like the widow that would, you know, search all day long for her one coin and rejoice when she found it. Or the one, the 99 and one, you know, 
when one person repents and follows Jesus, the angels rejoice. So that's what that reminded me of. But when, um, when they put the treasures on the buffet and people, <coughs> excuse me, were allowed to handle them, to have them, to see them, that is what our purpose is here. We can choose to share the treasure of Christ. I don't understand it. the table. Like, don't put them on the table. That's where we're playing gunplay cards. Don't, and I don't know. To me, it's like, hey, don't, don't be playing church. <laughs> That's what came to my mind. Uh, this, this, this is, these are precious. Treasures are precious. We, they are not to be handled like you would play a game. It's not a game. There it is. Thank you, Jesus, for that word game. Believing in Christ is not a game you play. It is a, it is the very core and essence of your being. And it is truly like finding treasure. When you find, find Jesus, it's like finding treasure. The reward is great. So I think this dream is about choosing to give what you have, what God has given you, recognize what that is, and give to others. I wonder if the woman in the yard represented the woman who anointed Christ with the perfume. Maybe the humble, humble ourselves in front of the Lord uh, and not be prideful and recognize the treasures he's given us and that we are the light and we are living in a very, very dark world. But we shine because we have Christ in us and the Holy Spirit. We're not alone. The Holy Spirit is in us, in believers. That is the mind of Christ. And we can share that with others. And truly, when, when you've been broke, having treasure and finding treasure like Christ is everything. That's all I have. I hope that encouraged you. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.